I spent 100 days on Ragnarok, and here is what happened. Well, before we get to what happened, uh, I should explain a couple things to you. The first thing, and the most important, is that this is a hardcore playthrough, so if I die at any time, it's over. I have to restart. And with danger lurking at every corner, this is gonna be a challenge. And the second notable thing is that I have to beat the boss with anything other than a Rex army. So, will I be able to survive the harsh conditions of Ragnarok, or will I die trying? Stick around and find out, my little booger heads. And also, please don't forget to subscribe, because this takes a long time. Starting off on day one, I of course had to make my character and load in. But before I got started, I had to make myself me, so I gave myself purple hair and a purple beard. And then I immediately got to work by picking up sticks and stones off the beach, punching trees for the thatch and wood. That way I could start crafting some essentials. Then of course, threw my tech skins on top of all my armor. After crafting a spear, I went and started killing some of the yard birds for their hide and meat. As day one was coming to an end, I had to build myself a little box, that way I would have shelter through the night. And not only did this campfire keep me warm, but it also granted me cooked meat. I also realized that I didn't have protection yet, Yet, so I crafted myself a bow and some arrows. On the morning of day two, I went out looking for a friend and sure enough, I found one. A high level moss chops on day two. Looks like we're starting things off right. Damn, you are strong. Moss chops are amazing early game because they are great berry gatherers. They get fiber and they're also tanky. While waiting on meat to spoil for narcotics, I'd figure I'd make myself useful and craft cooking pots for that experience. Speaking of narcotics, I got a mortar and pestle place down and started cooking some up. And after they were baked, I started making some trank arrows so I could add bigger threats to my team. As day two was coming to an end, I packed up all my stuff got on my chops and headed out to go explore. Day three, I spotted this decent pteranodon, so I trapped it and started tranking it out. <laughs> I didn't have any prime meat, so it took a while, but once this guy woke up, I named him Gibble. And after doing some more exploring, just like that, day three was coming to an end, but I found a spot that I'd like to set up for now. So after crafting wood foundations, I got them placed down, I got a forge crafted up, and while minding my own business, a Rex literally popped up out of nowhere to come put me in my place. No, he's gonna kill Gibble. Run, Gibble, run. Die, Rex, die. No, Gibble, dude. He was almost dead, too. At least we got 10 levels, that's something. Day four, I woke up and decided to take this opportunity to enjoy the peaceful nature. After doing so, I got a smithy crafted and then started expanding my box so I could have more room to place my goodies. And then after bashing a nearby metal rock, I was able to make my first metal tool, which was going to increase the amount of metal I got per rock that I farmed. On the morning of day five, I started adding walls to my base, that way I could be protected. I then decided to craft a crossbow because that was gonna allow me to take down bigger threats. Shortly after, I threw up some front doors and figured I'd be done for now. I got a second forge placed down because the more forges, the more metal production. I then went out to find another PT since Gibble died and I came across this level 135. So you know how this goes, trap him, shoot him in the head, knock him out. I then remembered there was a nearby stego, which meant prime meat, which meant better efficiency on the PT. While waiting for it to tame, I remembered that the labyrinth would need a sacrifice, so I tamed myself up a vulture, being proactive. Heading into the night, I crafted a pteranodon saddle, and then shortly after, Gibbolo7 was added to my team. Day 6, I woke up and chose to be risky by heading to the snow biome. I knew there was crystal up here, and I was gonna need a spyglass at some point. While I was in the area, I figured I'd kill a couple mammoths for their pelts so I could make fur armor. But as it was about to die, I attacked it one more time and it disappeared, so I had to head out because my health was getting low. After healing a bit, I headed back up and noticed there was a dead Yudi up here, which meant a lot of pelt for me. When I got back home, I used my newfound pelt to craft a chest piece and legs. Afterward, I made some dino gates, that way I could trap an Argy and possibly tame one. After searching for a while, the best I could find was a level 100, so I decided to get to work. And with some flawless execution, the Argy was trapped and ready to be knocked out. Come on, uh, yes. Oh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go. I gotta go my health. <laughs> While waiting on the RG, I finally had enough metal to craft a long neck, and then I headed back up to the snow biome to get oil and polymer so I could make cryopods. And sure enough, after searching for a little, I found a supply drop where I could craft them. When I got back, the RG was tamed, so I named her Georgina, potted her up, and then headed back home. While exploring earlier, I noticed an alpha carno in the distance, so I potted up my moss chops and went to go fight it. Ah, 
Obviously fighting went into the night, but we finally got there and we made out with some decent levels. Damn, level 81 already. When I got back home, I noticed that I was able to make flak now, so I of course crafted a full set. First thing I did on day 8 was go for a chitin and keratin run because my RG saddle needed a bunch. After farming, I was able to craft an RG saddle, then I headed out to find an Enki. After shooting it with tranks and knocking it out, I threw some mejo berries in its inventory and now it was time to wait. I got tired of sitting around, so on day 9, I went to go find myself a dodic. Ah, uh, this'll definitely do. When the Dodic tamed, I named her Jessica, and when the Enki tamed, I named it Alex. The first thing I did on day 10 was craft an Enki saddle and then brought it out to start farming some metal. So much stuff. Stone, holy crap. I then started crafting narcotics for more trank arrows because the next thing on my list was getting a griffin, which involved a lot of trank arrows. But before going out, I noticed a nearby supply crate, so I made as many cryopods as I possibly could, and then I made a bunch of gunpowder waiting for night to pass. On the morning of day 11, before heading out to go get the griffin, I found a nearby beaver dam and stole all of the stuff inside. When I got back to my base, I started crafting the trap for the griffin, which consisted of four dino gates and two doors. As the day was coming to an end, I went out searching for a griffin and found this 140, so now it was time to get it in the trap and make it mine. When morning rolled around, I knew that the griffin was really low on health and that my bow had maybe one or two shots max and this. This is what makes it all worth it, my friends. I'm so nervous. <laughs> There's no way. Oh my god, I'm the luckiest man in the world. <laughs> After knocking out the griffin, I noticed a nearby supply drop, so I figured I'd go check it out. You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be <laughs> After waiting nearly all day, the griffin finally woke up and I named him Grazer, potted him up, and then headed home. Day 13, I decided to take on an ambitious project, to say the least. <laughs> this took a very long time. And after two demanding days, the project was semi-complete. After finishing up with my base, I crafted the flak chest blueprint that I had. And now, my friends, it was time to go steal wyvern eggs. Possibly. But before that, I had to see what lied in this beautiful supply crate. So I finally made it to the wyvern trench in hopes of finding some decent eggs. But when I tell you I searched every nook and cranny of this forbidden place, I did not find a single egg. So I figured maybe I missed something, let me retrace my steps. So after searching another time, I didn't find a single egg, so I decided to head home when this happened. Oh my god, I'm dying really fast. I forgot this area was so dangerous. Why is it so cold? Oh wow, I might actually die. <laughs> okay, that could have been really bad. Jeez. So as my luck was running dry, I needed redemption. So on my way home, I headed into the ice cave. This place will generally have anywhere from three to five loot crates that are decent. But since I had devoted the next couple of days to wyverns, 
I had to reevaluate, so I headed home. My new plan was to at least craft one industrial item, whether that be the forge, chemistry bench, or cooker, so I started farming like a madman. Day 16, I started off by placing down my fabricator and crafting a chainsaw, which was then followed by killing penguins and chainsawing their bodies for all that polymer. I then brought my Anki to farm oil and crystal, and now I had almost everything I needed to craft an industrial item. I was feeling great about the progress I made so far, so I spent the rest of the evening relaxing. Day 17, I headed back to the Wyvern Trench because I didn't want to give up just yet on those eggs. And lucky for me, as soon as I showed up, there was a Lightning Wyvern egg waiting to be taken. When I got back home, I started crafting everything necessary for a little incubation station, and then started hatching my egg. A few moments later, my baby was born, and I named him Lion after a loyal subscriber. Day 18, I brought Lion out for a test drive, and his DPS was pretty damn good. After seeing how strong my new friend was, I brought it to the Wyvern Trench so I could attempt to steal a better egg. After clearing out most of the wyverns, I headed down and grabbed the first egg I saw, which was only a level 85 fire. So I headed deeper into the trench, cleared out more wyverns, and then, my friends, this is when I found the glorious egg. Dude. Dude. I cannot be stopped. I am relentless. By the time I made it out of the trench, I noticed it was day 19, so I headed home, hatched up my new egg, named it Jasper, and then headed off to go get some silica pearls. When I got back home, Jasper fully matured, so I took him out on a little loot run when I found this drop. I then started bullying a bunch of Brontos because, well, they're big dummy heads, but they also give a lot of experience. So all of the hard work finally paid off, because on day 20 I crafted a cooker, got some pipes laid out, placed the cooker down, and got a tap as well for my future drinking water. After all that, I crafted some med brews, because why the hell not? I then started crafting all of the armor blueprints that I had, so I had a better chance of survival. Well, I feel a lot safer with a thousand armor. Day 21, I headed over to the ice cave because I heard you could farm all of the loot in there by heading in and out of the loading zone, non-stop. I'd call that a pretty damn successful day. At the start of day 22, I started making some grappling hooks because I knew that I had to take on some crazy caves coming up. I also, of course, had to craft shotgun ammo for my newfound shotgun. After doing so, I went out to tame a stego because I needed a good berry farmer. After taming, I named it Mike, put a saddle on it, and then brought it out to start farming some narco berries. The next tame on my bucket list was a Giga, so I started crafting a buttload of Trank Darts. Day 23, I went to the swamp area and found this level 150 Sarko, and figured it would be good for the water caves. When the Sarko tamed, I named it Aquaman. And when I got home, I noticed that I could craft a chemistry bench now. And now that my preparations were complete, I headed to the highlands in search of a Giga. When I got to the area, I immediately got obliterated after swooping in and found out that it was a level 145 Giga. So I got my trap placed down, and now I just had to get him inside. Okay, easy does it, friend. Oh my god. I ho, oh, that just was almost very bad. After knocking out the Giga, I found some nearby Ovis for the raw mutton.
On the beautiful morning of day 27, my Giga came to life and I named her Melania. When I got back to my base, I crafted an industrial grill and then started cooking all of this raw mutton I had. Dude, this Giga is so strong. Oh, I love you. After playing around with a Giga, I knew that I wanted a Thyla for cave runs. So on day 28, I found a level 140 Thyla in the desert and I decided to make it mine. When the Thyla tamed, I named it Kilawa, potted it up, and started heading home. I then brought my wyvern out to go farm up some polymer from these cute little penguins so I could make an industrial forge. I then crafted a Thyla saddle and started prepping for the lava golem cave. Since I'm not playing on a cluster, I don't have access to a Velanosaur, so I had to use rocket launchers for this fight. Seeing as this playthrough is hardcore, this cave was extremely stressful. There's lava everywhere. Everything in here pretty much wants you to die. It's here for you to die. Oh gosh, don't give me rabies. No rabies, no rabies. Okay, one down, one more, one more. All right, any takers, do you wanna die? <clears throat> oh no, come on. Oh, well, good thing I have med brews. I pray to the holy lord that this lava does not kill me. Okay. Whew. One artifact down. But the hardest part is yet to come because once I break through this crystal, balls of flaming fury is gonna come flying at me. My videos aren't scripted, I swear. Please don't throw a rock. Please don't throw a rock. And just like that, we're golden. to my last rocket launcher. Oh, he's dead. Oh, thank you. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> Let's go get that beautiful loot. Why is this more stressful than the boss fight itself? Please. Okay. Damn. Damn. Oh, this is a lot better than I thought. You ready for a scene that literally almost ended this entire playthrough? Just keep running, just keep, oh gosh, no, whoa, whoa, okay. All right. I probably, most likely, probably have to kill this stuff. Oh no, let's just run, just run. <sighs> Why, I don't understand why all of this stuff spawns after I've already run the cave. Please connect! Okay. Alright. Oh, come on. Son of a... Damn it. Please don't push me off! I'm stuck. Okay. Oh, man. Nice and easy. Nice... Did I really just get sniped? Come on, man. Oh, that, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Get up, bend over. Oh no! I thought I was dead. Oh lord. How do I get out of here? I have no more grapples. I have no more grapples. Oh no, my, am I dead? Is this it for me, boys? Am I, no, 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 no! I had my Thyla the whole time. <laughs> oh, this would have been so much easier. I just want to get up the wall. Just let me get up the wall. Stop bullying me. Okay, we're done. We're done. You're all dying. You've asked for it. And how does that feel to not be of existence anymore? You freaking pecker. I can say with 100% certainty that that cave was psychotic. What the hell? How am I alive? Day 31, I brought my Sarko out because I knew there was an artifact at the bottom of the ocean that I needed to get. And within seconds, I spotted a Tuso and knew I needed the tentacles for the final boss fight. So I, of course, started chomping away, hoping for the best. Can this thing just die? Oh! Okay, well, you're not doing as much damage. Oh, I have a really good saddle on this thing. I forgot. I'm chilling. And I'm not doing damage anymore. Can you just let me go? I don't know how this works. 
How long do you hold on to me for? Wait, I've never tamed one of these before. How do you do it? 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 Grab me again. Grab me again. I think, no, no, no. He needs to grab me and then I need to feed him black pearls. And I have black pearls. There we go. Okay. Level 135! All right, I got 100 pearls. I got 100 pearls. Please work. I have never done this before. Oh. Oh, that was really easy. What? It was kind of fun. So of course I wouldn't be treading the waters with the Sarko anymore, so I went home and made a Tuso saddle and then started killing everything in the ocean. This is for you guys killing me all the time. You're done. You can't hurt me now. Day 32, I spotted an Alpha Megalodon and wanted to see how this Tuso could do. Oh, dude, that was light work. Dude, this egg's crazy. While I was down here, I figured I'd get all of the tributes I needed for the boss fights, Tuso tentacles being one of them. Day 33, I picked a fight with an Alpha Tuso, and this was actually very intimidating. He was doing a lot of damage. Please die, brother. Thank you. Finally. And after a couple of days and a lot of fighting, I was finally able to grab the artifact of the Devourer. Later on in the day, I went out to find the rest of the easy artifacts. I just wanted to be proactive and get everything other than the labyrinth taken care of. After a bunch of prep work on day 34, I headed to the Ice Queen cave, which I was extremely nervous about. But there was no more time to waste, so I potted up my griffin and my giga and headed in. The reason this cave is so dangerous is because of the copious amounts of death worms. <sighs> oh. Oh, 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 chill! Why are there so many? What is that, four? Five? Five? Oh god. I need to get out. I need to get out. Let me out. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Do not. Okay. Whoo! Holy hell, bro. That should be all of them. Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. Why is there more? Come on, man. Dude, there's three. Go back in. Go back in. My gosh, dude. Freaking... Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. You're gonna block me in like that. You're gonna block me in. No. Damn it. <laughs> Kill a lot. I do... This game. You're really pushing my buttons, man. This is gonna suck. After finally making it through all the death worms, it was time for the boss fight, so I parachuted down and threw my Giga out. <laughs> yo, 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 some, something's not right, dude. Why are you so tall? What, what the hell? What is happening? What? <laughs> he looks like a shark. Oh, well, that was depressingly easy. Okay, well, uh, artifact of the pack. Nice. When I got back to my base, I hung my trophy and decided to call it a day. On the morning of day 36, I started gathering all the Spino tributes I would need for the boss fight. And then since my Thyla died, later on in the day, I spotted a level 150 and decided to tame it. And you know how this goes, put cooked lamb chops in the inventory, wait a freaking century, and then it's yours. And just as I was about to leave, I saw a level 145 female, which gave me a breeding pair. How lucky. Yay, I get to sit out here for a full another day. Ugh.
Ah, uh, finally. When I got back to my base, I allowed both Thylas to start breeding so I could get an imprinted baby. Day 39, I brought my Enki up to the snow biome because I wanted to get some oil and crystal, but also polymer. So I set my Enki down, and this is where everything went to sh. Yo, what the hell? What the hell? Back at the what the f Dude! I'm so upset right now, bro. Anyways, when I got home, I made an industrial grinder because this map literally has infinite loot, which means infinite resources. I then claimed my Phyla, then made a nanny, which imprints on my dinos when I'm not around. Okay, let's see. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Dude, I don't even know why I check these anymore. Dire Bear Saddle, once again. Gotta love it. <gasps> That's a Phyla <laughs> I thought that was a Dire Bear! <laughs> So you already know, I went home, crafted the saddle, and strapped up my thylum. After doing so, I headed into the ice cave so I could kill all of these dire bears and get my phyla some levels. When I was finished with that, I started prepping for the labyrinth, which was probably the thing I was stressed the most about in this playthrough. If I'ma go out, I'ma go out in style. Hey, yeah. After dyeing my armor on day 41, I noticed that I got a color mutation on my thylas. But shortly after that, all my prep work was done. I said goodbye to my base for maybe the last time ever and headed off to the labyrinth. Once I arrived, there was no time to waste. I headed into the scary labyrinth of Ragnarok. And jump. Okay, and now we press G, parkour. Press R, look around, find an A, a hop, skip, jumping away, and there's a T. Okay, jump on the T, jump on the ledge, go around, move it around town, jump on this, and carefully jump on that, and jump, and hop, oh gosh, and jump, okay, crouch down, keep on moving, friends, keep on moving, stand up, jump on the pillar, all right, we're doing good, don't hit your head on the ceiling or you will fall. Yup! Okay. Jump on this, and hopefully you make it in here. Nice. Press the last A, and you got Grotta. All right. Easy does it. I am going completely prone. I'm going to take the left path, because I don't know anything about the right, and I don't want to watch a video right now. So let's just dig it nice and slow. Press this button. This one should open. I am correct. All right. So I did bring my scuba tank with me, luckily, because I would not have enough oxygen to make it through this alive. Alright, this is the next part that I actually don't remember too well, so I'm just gonna roll with it. Uh, yeah, I think it's this way. I'm just gonna stick to the wall. What the heck? Oh! Oh no, I'm bullet! Ah, oh, great. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, gotta sit here for the next 17 seconds. I have my fire. Oh, this is gonna be so much easier. All right. Yeah, yeah. I like this. Yeah, we just run past everything. Easy money. Oh, I just ran right over that gap too. Press it. Okay. Oh, the fun room. The fun room. I'm scared, I'm s What the heck? Really? Uh, run! Okay, go in here, right? I don't know what to do! I think there's grenades up here. Yep, there sure is. What you got for me? Huh. I'll take it. That's pretty good. All right, so it's right, middle, left. And then I'm just going to sprint back for my life. No? Wait, wait. Do I have to do right, middle, left again? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Right, right, hurry. Middle. And left. Okay. I'm scared! Oh, my gosh. This is stressing me out. Run! Oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't want that. I don't care. I don't care. Go in here. Run straight. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm so sorry, Thyla. Oh, don't, don't I just press this button and then I'm home free? Ah, oh, no. Okay, that's cool. But there's a button at the beginning I forgot about. 
what you got for me. Really? There's the sneaky little button, and now we just sprint back, and I believe I'm almost done. Alright, let's kill all this stuff real quick. You guys are weak. Level 260, more like level 60. <laughs> Who raised you? <laughs> yes, sir. Ah, oh, I forgot about this part. Oh, this is gonna be so much easier with a Philo. I believe Skylord. Yep, Skylord. Okay. All right, so there's two artifacts at the end of this path after the boss fights. And then the right path holds the last artifact for me to be able to fight the boss. Oh my gosh, thank God I brought the freaking vulture. I completely forgot about this part. <laughs> Forgive me, for I have betrayed you, my dear friend. But it was necessary. What am I saying? It's a vulture. Who cares? <laughs> And I'm so sorry for the letdown, but the deer never spawned. The spirit deer that are supposed to be in here, there's two of them, maybe one, you kill that, and then the spirit wolves and the spirit bears spawn. I was in here for a full day and they never spawned. So, you know what I had to do. Ooh, I'm a ghost. I take the artifacts and I disappear. This sucks, man. I wanted to fight the freaking boss. Anyways, I made my way out of the labyrinth, but I had to run it all over again for the final artifact. But before that, I had to tame another vulture just in case I needed another sacrifice, because I couldn't remember. So you know how it goes, do all the parkour, type in Grata, and I'm through the first door. The only difference this time is in the scorching room, I go through the right door instead of the left. And instead of screwing up the parkour a bunch of times here, I just use my Thyla. Hey, the final artifact! Oh, there's... That makes me nervous. Oh, please don't screw it up! Okay. Well, I'm glad I got another vulture. <laughs> I would have been screwed. And just like that, we were finished with all of the artifacts and the labyrinth, and now it was just time to get all the tributes. I still needed almost the full 25 of each tribute to fight the final boss, so that's what I went around doing the next couple of days. And on day 50, I finally got back home. Since I was feeling accomplished, I decided to go ahead and finish my base. <laughs> it's coming along. I like it. And I present to you a modern mid-2000s home with a beautiful deck, equipped and furnished with top-of-the-line appliances and, not to mention, the cute kittens. 250k for this bad boy. You can reach me at 123-456-789, I'm your dad. Over the next couple of days, I focused on breeding and also going loot hunting for Thyla saddles. Well, better Thyla saddles. Uh, too bad it's not a blueprint. Oh, thank you so much. Exactly what I wanted. Do people actually use the compass in this game? Come on. On my travels, I saw an Alpha Carno, so I equipped my Chibi so I could get the extra levels. Oh yeah, by the way, it's probably worth noting that I'm using Thylas for the Alpha boss fight. I didn't know, and I touch on this later. Oh, it's so good, but it's not what I need. Damn. <laughs>
And it wasn't until day 60 that we finally found an Ascendant Thyla Blueprint saddle with 131.9 armor. I was literally put on this earth to win. To just win and not lose. <laughs> I'm so lucky. <laughs> but the saddle blueprint alone was going to be a grind because of how much hide and fiber it needed. So that's what I did over the next five days. All of that for just two saddles. This is gonna take forever. I was almost done with the grind, but by day 65, I had 13 saddles and 13 thylas complete and ready to go. And before we go any further, yes, I know that thylas can't be brought into a boss arena, but I did not know that until day 98, so bear with me. So that being said, we're gonna speed this whole process up because it was a major waste of my time. So on day 66 through 70, I farmed the rest of the stuff I needed to craft the rest of the thyla saddles. Day 71, I went out to the snow biome and found this decent Yudi, so I chased him on foot and got him knocked out. When night rolled around, he finally woke up and I named him Mike Wazowski. I don't know why. When I got back to base, I started knocking out two different Rexes because I wanted a breeding pair, that way I could kill babies for the experience. And day 75 through 81, I killed a bunch of Rex babies with all my Phylas. My army was complete, but little did I know. The following day, I got a Quetzal knocked out because I wanted to tame a Titanosaur. You ask why? I have no clue. I've just never tamed one, and it seemed like a fun challenge. So over the next couple of days, I built the entire cannon setup that I would need to do so. And after slowly lugging 200 cannonballs back and forth, the setup was finally complete. Another challenge I set for myself was max leveling my chibi, but after killing this Alpha Rex and seeing how little experience I got, that was off the table. So I just went back to my base to craft the Titanosaur saddle, which was extremely expensive, and 200 freaking pounds. <laughs> I'm so slow. And enjoy this short clip of me flying for two hours. Dude, this is stressing me out. Where is he? Detect. Oh gosh, thank you. It's over. Woo, that would have sucked. This edit is purely for your enjoyment because this tested my patience on every level. It took forever. This edit could go on for years. This whole process took me five in-game days, so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. Dude, he has to be getting close. I just checked his torpor. It was like maybe one, two, three shots at most. Come on. No, 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 no. Yes, finally, dude. Oh my God. What a waste of my time. I don't even think you could cryopod these things. <laughs> How I when I threw the saddle in his inventory, he tamed up and I named him Gandalf. It was a lot of fun walking around for two seconds. <sighs> the things I do for you guys. When I got back to my base, I started potting up all the thylas because there was no more time to waste, and I wanted to say my final goodbyes to my base and all my tames. This is the first 100 day playthrough I've ever done where my first tame survived the whole time. Goodbye, base. Goodbye, Pedro. Goodbye, wyverns. Goodbye, everything. It's time. Let's go kick some ass. While I love Ragnarok, there's just nothing left for me on this map. So I did my final fly through, enjoying the scenery and the beautifulness of this map. And when I got to the tallest mountain, I enjoyed the final sunset with my two OG tames. Now who the hell was gonna tell me that Thylas can't go in a boss arena? I looked it up and I was like, are Thylas good for this fight? And it said no, because you can't bring them. Damn it. Now I'm gonna have to spend so much more time on this freaking <laughs> So for the sake of content and speeding things up so I'm not here for 200 freaking days, I tamed two Therese, bred them, 
kept the first line, leveled them, raised some babies, rinse and repeat for seven days, and you have putting your life into the hands of birds with tickle fingers. All right, you guys, it's day 105. I can't do this no more. So we're going to go into the fight and hope these theories are good enough. Okay, 105 days later, and here we are. <laughs> are you guys ready? Because I definitely am not. Oh, man, this is going to suck. Come on, stamina. We just have the marriage core and then we're done. And then we're done. Dimorphodons, leave me alone. Yo, what the hell? What the hell? My armor didn't even break or anything. What do you mean, dude? I, well, I was taking 11 damage and then it turned into 140 and 150? What do you mean? I am so confused. My armor didn't break. My armor definitely didn't break. I would have known. And then I would have been like, oh, it's my fault. I'm dumb. But no. Well, that's a wrap, my friends. If I did something wrong, please tell me because I have no clue why I died. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. And don't forget to hit that friggin' subscribe button. I love you all.